Okay, hi there and welcome to a short video on labour market flexibility. And we're going to focus on this particular question in the bottom right hand corner. Evaluate the impact of changes in labour market flexibility. So what exactly do we mean by the term flexible labour markets? Well, it refers to the speed and the ability of a labour market to respond to one or more changes in the economy. And uh, labour market flexibility is often seen as important for a strong supply side performance. So when we talk about flexibility, we might think about uh, flexible skills of workers, uh, the ability to move from one job to another, for example, flexible geographical location, so a high level of geographical mobility, perhaps also the flexibility in terms of the number of hours that people work per week. Uh, the, the length of their work contracts, flexibility of pay, and so on. Essentially, we're looking at a labour market where the conditions of employment can respond quickly to changes in the wider economy. The UK economy is widely regarded as having a fairly flexible labour market. What's the evidence for that? Well, there's various indicators we can look at. Uh, one is that there's been a significant rise in self-employment and home working. Indeed, around 5 million people in this country now are registered as self-employed. There's also been a big increase in part-time work. Something like 15% of the labour force is now part-time. And you may have read in the media about the increase in the number of jobs which offer zero-hours contracts. That's a controversial topic, obviously. Many more people are working for employment agencies and in many places around the UK we're seeing the emergence of a startup accelerator culture where often you have a, a converted workspace where lots and lots of small businesses are establishing themselves, setting up and trying to break into markets. Obviously the debate about Brexit is, is contemporary. In the last 10-15 years there's been very high levels of net inward migration of people coming into the UK which has added to labour market flexibility. We've also seen a fall in trade union membership. As of 2018, only one worker in four in work was a member of a trade union in the UK. And we've also seen a significant increase in female labour market participation. The employment rate amongst women workers has increased, although of course the gender pay gap remains a significant uh, aspect of labour market failure. So the question asks us to evaluate the impact of a flexible labour market. So that invites a discussion about some of the, the pluses, the advantages of flexibility, and then compare and contrast with some of the drawbacks, some of the disadvantages. So what might we include as disadvantages of, fle of a flexible labour market? Well, look at the evidence. Uh, the UK now has the lowest unemployment rate for well over 40 years. The current rate of unemployment at the time of this video in April 2019 is just 3.9% of the labour force. Uh, linked to that is uh, a technical concept called the NIRU. The NIRU, N-A-I-R-U, is the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. And it's basically the rate of unemployment that we can reach without seeing a big acceleration in inflation. By some estimates, UK unemployment can now be which is about 4% of the labour force, without there being a serious risk of inflation. And I think the flexible labour market may well have contributed to that situation. Uh, a lot of people are linking the flexible labour market to an improvement in the inflation unemployment trade-off, as shown by the conventional Phillips curve. To what extent, for example, has the Phillips curve flattened uh, in the UK over the last 10 years? Having labour market flexibility is also quite useful in helping the, the wider economy help to absorb external economic shocks. And it, flexibility in terms of hours and contracts and um, the ability to work at home, for example, can often help older workers who might have taken early retirement, for example, to come back into the labour force. And that can reduce the risks from an increase in the age dependency ratio. So plenty of advantages of labour market flexibility. I think the key one really would be to look at the unemployment data. This chart takes us through the, the unemployment rate as a percentage from 1980 through to 2019. And you can see how, how much lower it is now than it was 
at the, at the end of the last recession in 2013, but also if you go much further back to the mid-1980s and the early 1990s. So the UK unemployment rate is at historically low levels, certainly in the modern, modern times. On the other hand, of course, there are also some drawbacks from labour market flexibility. For many people, there is increased job uncertainty. Um, some people are calling the calling this the rise of the precariat. People in precarious jobs, they don't know quite what their next job's going to be, how long it's going to last, and what income they're going to get from it. Uh, the flexible labour market has also been associated with the rise of monopsy in the power of employers. Businesses such as Deliveroo and Amazon offering part-time, often non-contract wages. And to what extent has that led to, contributed to a slower growth of, of real wages for people in work? Uh, there's also some evidence that labour market flexibility has increased working poverty. Many people in part-time work have a job, but they're not earning enough to lift their family out of relative poverty, and therefore they still have to claim a range of welfare benefits including universal credit. Some economists argue that a flexible labour market has also led businesses to underinvest in their workforce. So human capital hasn't developed as much, and that might be one factor behind relatively low productivity. And although the flexible labour market has undoubtedly, I think, increased the profits of many businesses, because they can better match labour demands to the economic conditions, so corporate profitability has increased, but the big issue there is whether businesses are are paying sufficient tax into the government or is, you know, obviously there's the whole debate about uh, corporate tax avoidance is something well worth watching so lots of advantages disadvantages from flexible labor markets it's important to be able to evaluate the impact in terms of macro objectives but also think about um, concepts and topics such as uh, income inequality okay hopefully you found that video useful thanks for joining in on this video on labour market flexibility.